In this lesson we will explore how to successfully plan an organization's hybrid needs and begin the integration process. Creating a hybrid environment involves connecting your existing on-prem services such as Exchange and Active Directory with corresponding services that are hosted in the cloud. Each on-prem service and its corresponding cloud service creates a trust connection and allows information to flow freely between both environments. So how to accomplish that is what we are going to go and learn in this lesson. Let us start with understanding how can you plan a hybrid exchange environment. When planning a hybrid exchange environment, an organization must consider these following requirements. The first one is hybrid deployment requirements. So before configuring a hybrid deployment, an organization must ensure that its on-premises organization meets all the prerequisites required for a successful deployment. Next is Exchange Active Sync Clients. When an organization moves a mailbox from its on-prem exchange organization to Exchange Online, all the clients that access the mailbox must be updated to use Exchange Online, including Exchange Active Sync devices. Most Exchange Active Sync clients are automatically reconfigured when the mailbox is moved to Exchange Online. However, some older devices may not update correctly. The third consideration is mailbox permissions migration. On-prem mailbox permissions that are explicitly applied to the mailbox are migrated to Exchange Online. So these permissions include send as, full access, send on behalf of and folder permissions. So verify that all permissions are explicitly granted and all objects are mail enabled before migration. Another consideration is support for cross-premises mailbox permissions. So exchange hybrid deployments support the use of full access and send on behalf of permissions between mailboxes located in an on-premises exchange organization and mailboxes located in Microsoft 365. The next is offboarding. As part of ongoing recipient management, an organization may have to move exchange online mailboxes back to its on-prem environment and consider mailbox forwarding settings. Mailboxes can be set up to automatically forward mail sent to them to another mailbox. While mailbox forwarding is supported in Exchange Online, the forwarding configuration is in copied to Exchange Online when the mailbox is migrated there. So before an organization migrates a mailbox to Exchange Online, it must first export the forwarding configuration for each mailbox. After planning your Exchange Hybrid, the next step is to plan a hybrid SharePoint environment if you have an on-prem SharePoint environment. So creating a SharePoint hybrid environment is about using both SharePoint Server on-prem and Microsoft 365 SharePoint Online to achieve your business goals. To create a hybrid SharePoint environment, there are many planning guidelines that must be considered when choosing the best solution for your company. You should consider things like taxonomy, OneDrive for Business, Search, Profiles, App Launcher, Sites, server-to-server -server authentication, etc. Other thing to understand is companies don't need to set up a hybrid environment to get the most out of SharePoint Online. Plenty of functionality already exists within SharePoint Online that allows organizations to maximize their collaboration efforts without needing to configure a hybrid state. However, a hybrid environment doesn't provide an extra features, all of which can be set up with the help of hybrid picker tool. These include hybrid OneDrive, hybrid site features and hybrid app launcher. The next thing to consider is plan for a hybrid Teams and Skype for Business environment. When an organization has an on-premises Skype for Business users who are simultaneously using Microsoft Teams, they can't interoperate with Skype for Business users from their Teams client. They also can't communicate with users in federated organizations from their Teams client. If these users want to add their functionality in Teams, the organization must complete some of these tasks. 
These tasks include move the users from on-prem Sky for Business to the cloud, which requires configuring a hybrid Sky for Business environment, and upgrade to Teams only mode in the Microsoft Teams admin center. This is a diagram which shows a Sky for Business split domain hybrid configuration. So user A and B are homed online but are discoverable by on-prem users. Users C and D are homed on-premises but are discoverable by online users. There are other things to consider, things like infrastructure requirements and topology requirements. And Microsoft supports multi-forest hybrid scenarios as well, which include resource forest topology and multiple deployments of Skype for Business Server in multiple forest. That concludes this lesson. In the next lesson, we are going to learn about how to plan your migration to Microsoft 365. I will see you in the next one. Until then, take care.